Hello, this is Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're in Mount 55, one of the five inch guns, and I'm sitting in the gun captain's position here in the back of the gun mount. The gun captain has access to a ton of different buttons, gauges, annunciators, voice tubes, switches, all sorts of other things around here, operating instructions. There's just the space is surrounded with information that he needs or communications equipment that he's going to need for uh, using the gun mount. But this one has something cool in it. Uh, the graffiti isn't quite the right word. All of this information around him and uh, remember this is still an age where you're dialing phone numbers. This phone doesn't have a memory like your smartphone does. He needs a list of phone numbers for the ship. The ship has something like uh, 800 of these rotary style phones. They're ship service telephones. This particular type was installed in the 80s, although there was an earlier type that dates all the way back to World War II. Uh, each compartment on the ship that has one of these phones has a four digit phone number that starts with the number seven. But with over 800 of these numbers, obviously the guy doesn't uh, remember everything. When you first come on board the ship, one of the things in your welcome packet usually included a, a little like printed onboard phone book that lists all the office numbers and those sorts of things. Well, he's not carrying that uh, folded piece of paper around in his back pocket. So what did he do? He's got uh, information all around him, except for the back side of this light fixture right here. And he has sharpied on the light fixture the numbers that he uses most frequently. For example, he's got quarter deck forward 7203. That is still the number of quarter deck. If I wanted to call quarter deck right now today because there is an emergency, I could dial that on this phone, and that's where our quarterdeck officer, the first tour guide you see when you come on the ship, is going to be located. Uh, so it's almost always manned when the ship's open. I could call and say, hey, I'm having an issue. Can you send some help back here? And he would find a staff member to come back here and help me. All the way back to, uh, we believe, sometime in the 80s. Now you can tell that this light fixture is sort of just like added on aftermarket. These fluorescent tube fixtures uh, some are added in the 60s. This one, I'm guessing, was added in the 80s based on the light switch that's attached to it right here. Uh, this mount would have, early in the 80s, been manned by the Marines. But then at the very end of the ship's career, would have had a crew of gunners mates in it. Uh, so that's probably what it is. I'm not sure if these numbers date back to the Marine period or uh, to when the uh, gunners mates were in here, right at the very end of the ship's career. So in addition to quarter deck forward, it also has aft quarter deck, and it's got written on there in port. So it's likely only manned when the ship is in port. Again, it's somewhere where there's probably going to be a quarter deck officer. If you, if you need somebody, it's going to be very difficult when the ship is in port to find uh, officers, but that's somewhere they're likely to be. It's got uh, both forward and aft plot phone numbers up there. That's where this gun is probably getting its fire control information from. And it's very much a toss up between which one is going to be sending the signal to which gun mounts. If the battery is divided, they may well be getting their signals from different uh, plotting rooms. Next up, it's got uh, in parentheses, air forward diesel. That's where the air compressors are that's sending the uh, air up to these guns to shoot down the barrels after they fired to blow out the, the residue, like swabbing out the guns. So that's a critical system that they're relying on something from outside of this position. Uh, it's also got the bridge and damage control central on there. If they have to report damage, uh, if they need the captain or the officer of the deck when they're at sea, it's got both of those numbers. Critically, it doesn't have the handling room or magazine associated with this gun, but this voice tube right here is to the handling room directly below us where we're getting our ammunition from. So doesn't seem like they needed to dial. Could also open up the hatch in the deck directly below me there and just call down to those guys. 
So it's super cool seeing this original, and again, graffiti isn't the right word, but uh, it's not an official sign that's hung there. It's somebody sharpied in what they often used, what they needed. Uh, so it, it's interesting to see what it was that the gun captured Mount 55 most often needed to communicate to. It's also interesting seeing that this, this is right here, eye level in the gun captain's uh, position. Now, Mount 55 is the one that we have open on the tour route. With a regular ticket, you can come out and visit Mount 55. Uh, on your regular tour, you can come through here. You can see where the 14 sailors would have been. You can uh, even climb up here where the gun captain would sit and look right at those numbers and see how easy it is to pick up the phone and look at that while you're dialing. What are some other positions on the ship that you think we might find these stenciled near phones? Let us know in the comment section down below. We'll go look for them and maybe it'll be the contents of a future video. Also, which phone numbers have you actually memorized? Besides uh, my childhood landline, which no longer exists because now everybody uses cell phones, and my own cell phone number, uh, I don't think I have any of them memorized. I have to check my business card to remember what uh, my office phone number is. But let us know in the comment section down below which ones you remember. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.